Hello everyone and welcome to Arctic Retro and today I have another mail and donations video for you and uh, I have several uh, interesting items uh, for example this one uh, but it's not a vacuum cleaner <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's see what I got this time. And as usual, the best bits comes last. Enjoy! Here's a package uh, sent from uh, Norway and it's something I ordered from uh, the INF company. And uh, that's a web shop where they sell different types of uh, gadgets. <laughs> Guess you can call it that. And let's see what it is. So this is a high definition multimedia interface. There it is and it's a HD video converter from a component uh, input PR, PBY and uh, sound and uh, the output is uh, HDMI. And it needs uh, 5 volts input, uh, which is obviously not supplied, and uh, that's probably because it was so cheap, only uh, 30 euros, uh, including shipping. <laughs> Next package came from the United Kingdom via Royal Mail, and uh, yeah, this is something I got from uh, you make robots uh, which uh, is uh, a website and uh, a maker of uh, gadgets <laughs> i guess you can call them that you make robots.com and uh, they sell uh, retro computer gadgets and uh, i was contacted by uh, ricky and um, he offered to uh, send me uh, this one uh, if i was willing to review it uh, of course with no uh, strings attached and I said yes because I uh, think it's uh, interesting to test out new stuff. <laughs> All right so let's see what it is. Actually I know what it is but I want to keep this video uh, uh, exciting and uh, make it uh, very exciting for you to wonder what I got. <laughs> so there it is and it's a ZX Frankenstein. Seems uh, like I got myself a Sinclair uh, wallet as a gift also. <laughs> nice. Mm. Well, the ZX uh, Frankenstein, uh, obviously it's something for uh, the ZX Spectrum. Uh, <laughs> and here's the um, descriptions uh, for how to use it. All right, so what is it? <laughs> I haven't really heard about this device until now. And uh, if you have uh, followed my videos, you saw I uh, made a video about the uh, ZX Duino or uh, uh, Max Duino, which is an um, Arduino based device that lets you uh, load ZX Spectrum games from a memory card and uh, that worked really well. And this is actually something similar except you connect it to the expansion port and it also has a Kempston joystick porch. So it's um, both uh, joystick port and a uh, Max Duino in one case. So looking great, I'm uh, gonna review it in another video. So a small package from the UK and uh, what's in it? Old computer parts. <laughs> All right, I only want uh, new computer parts, not old. All right, so there is something here. It is, uh, yeah, this 
is a 5 volt switch mode 78 of fire replacement modules for uh, the ZX Spectrum, but uh, it can actually be used on uh, other machines as well. I think I bought this on the Retroleum site in the UK. And the thing with these is that you replace the 7805 voltage regulators that can get very hot and uh, also they need a um, large heat sink but uh, now instead you can use these and these run cold. Another small package uh, from China uh, sent through Germany and uh, the description is uh, LED module. Not really sure what it is. <laughs> okay, so here it is. I think the description was uh, faulty because uh, <laughs> these are pin headers, not LED modules. <laughs> yeah, I just need them from time to time, so I am um, just. Uh, Purchased a bunch from China, pretty cheap. A little uh, bigger package and this comes from uh, Oslo. I purchased it uh, from uh, someone on uh, fin.no, uh, the Norwegian uh, version of, uh, yeah, call it eBay. Uh, only that it is uh, for the most part uh, private and used stuff that's sold there. I have uh, some uh, storage searches on fin.no, which is actually some keywords that I'm interested in, like Commodore or uh, Atari. So this came up in the Atari search. Packaging is good. And here it is, a bunch of Atari. Um, cartridges. Let me take them out and um, get the full overview. That's the lot. 15 cartridges for uh, the Atari uh, 2600. Except for... Yeah, I'm not sure, sure about this one. It says Coleco and uh, these two here. I'm not sure. It looks to be the same uh, type of uh, interface, so probably is. So, a lot of um, good games here. I paid around 50 euros for uh, all these games, and um, that's a bargain, I think. So what do we got? We have TAS, Space Invaders, Centipede, Galaxian, Pole Position, Missile Command, Dolphin, Mrs. Pac-Man, Berserk, Warlodge, Vanguard, and uh, Skiing. <laughs> I have uh, hooked up my Atari Junior and uh, let's see if any of this works or not. Uh, I'll try the Space Invaders first. Unfortunately, this just has the antenna uh, signal output. I haven't done any composite uh, video modification, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Picture quality is uh, not the best. Seems to be working, yeah. Now let's try this strange one, the frogs and flies. <laughs> yeah actually works. <laughs> Interesting game. <laughs> you jump around and try to catch flies with the tongue. Next I'm gonna try this uh, skiing. No, that one seems to be dead. Oh no, no it works. <laughs> Just blow a little bit in the contact and then it came. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> the final game I'm gonna test is this Berserk. Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> oh man, the colors. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oh, this was a pretty good game. Well, I think that's it for testing these games. I'm gonna test them all uh, later just to see if everyone is working or not. Here's a package from my sponsor, PCBWay. Uh, I just uh, ordered some PCBs and uh, they were produced and sent, delivered all the way to my door in just a matter of five, six days. PCBWay.com Let's see what I got in the box. Packaging seems to be very nice. I just picked these uh, PCBs out of the PCB Way shared uh, projects, and uh, <laughs> this one is uh, actually a cartridge PCB for Impossible Mission by Epix. This one is a cartridge PCB for the Commodore 64 for the Donkey Kong. These are uh, PCBs for uh, Tapuino Mini for the Commodore 64. Let's open. I ordered the five of each. Yeah, the quality looks just amazing. And these are PCBs for uh, the final Grom cartridge for uh, the Texas Instruments TI-99 4A machine. And uh, this makes it possible to uh, load cartridge games from uh, memory card onto uh, the TI-99. Packaging is very good and sturdy. <laughs> That's really nice. These look really nice, I must admit. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the cutout is really exciting. I have never seen PCBs like this before. This might show up in another video some other time. We'll see. Oh my god, look at this. <laughs> this is uh, crazy. <laughs> it's too big to fit on my desk, so I have to go down uh, <laughs> on my knees on my floor. This is a great donation. Uh, <laughs> I cannot believe it. Um, I'm a little bit uh, lost for uh, words. <laughs> Obviously, it's a Commodore Amiga 1000. And uh, yeah, what can I say? I got this uh, from a co-worker at my job. And his name is uh, Roy Loftus. And uh, he's also a friend of mine. And uh, I wasn't aware that he had an Amiga 1000. He has had it in uh, storage uh, for... Uh, yeah, many, many years at his uh, mother's house, but uh, no, suddenly he took it uh, out and uh, <laughs> he actually asked if I wanted to keep it. And uh, of course I uh, accepted and I'm uh, very grateful for that. I don't have an uh, Amiga 1000 in my collection. And uh, if you uh, follow my channel, you saw that I made a couple of videos about the um, Amiga 1000 restoration that I did. And um, that was actually a machine I fixed for uh, another friend. <laughs> anyway, let's open the box and take a look at the machine. Boxed Amiga 1000. And the box is in uh, very good condition. Not that important, but uh, yeah, it's good to have. So here is the machine. I'll put it uh, on my bench. Here's the machine and it looks very nice. A little bit uh, dirty, but uh, that's uh, normal, I guess. And uh, yeah, some labeling here, the name of uh, 
Roy Loftus, who gave me this machine, and the Commodore Exclusive Club, I don't know what that is. Atlantis Informationssystemer, that's, uh, that's actually uh, the shop that uh, sold this machine back in the day, here in Norway. <laughs> and this one, IBM Personal Computer XT, doesn't belong there, this needs to go quickly. <laughs> Turn around and uh, yeah, take a look. And it looks perfect, no damages or anything. The monitor box, unfortunately, it does not contain uh, the monitor. The monitor um, was uh, broken many years ago and was uh, thrown away, so it doesn't exist anymore. However, this box is full of other goodies and <laughs> it's so heavy, I can't almost can't lift it. Oh, I had a hard time getting it uh, up here in the attic. <laughs> Let me hook it up to the TV and uh, test if it is working still. Turning on the machine. Uh, there's the button. <laughs> Fan is spinning. Black screen. Floppy is uh, ticking. And yeah, we have the Amiga Kickstart symbol. Nice. Floppy drive is uh, ticking. Unfortunately, I don't have a Kickstart uh, diskette uh, right now. I have to make one. Uh, let's take a look at the other stuff. I just have to place it out here on my floor because <laughs> can't simply fit it on my desk and there's the keyboard of course important item and here we got some stuff magazines old Amiga forum Norwegian magazines oh here's a external floppy drive nice here's a binder with something Deluxe Paint 2. This seems to be um, some references for Deluxe Paint. Civilization Advances Chart. Yeah, lots of printouts, different kinds. Don't know exactly what it is. And here is. Okay, the Amiga user guides, introduction to Amiga. This must be the original manual for the Amiga 1000. Nice, taking care of discs. Amiga basic. Oh, this is uh, great stuff. Huh. High resolution monitor doesn't exist. Amiga assembly language programming, Jake Commander. All right. Well, interesting. I wasn't really into assembly programming uh, on the Amiga back in the day. I lost interest in it then. And uh, maybe I should take it up. Here's the hardware reference manual. ROM kernel reference manual. These are big Bibles. ROM kernel reference manual libraries and devices. Oh, this is probably necessary if you're gonna do some programming on the Amiga. What we got here? Enhancer software, Amiga DOS. Okay. And here. Amiga DOS, Norsk Brukevenning, Norwegian user manual. <laughs> and here we have uh, games. FA-18 Interceptor. 
uh, is it on uh, floppy or CD? Oh, it's uh, it's a floppy disk. Yeah, there is probably some uh, code <laughs> sheet for uh, yeah copy protection. Paint two. Uh, paint two manual. Okay. Nice. And here is a cruise for a corpse game. All right. So here's uh, floppies and uh, yeah, some uh, copy protection <laughs> code. All right. So. Um, Otherwise, there's some uh, cables and three full boxes with floppy disks. Oh man, <laughs> there's a lot. Some collection of uh, disks. So, uh, SimCity, yeah, I guess. Uh, if I'm gonna test all this, I'm gonna use a little bit of time. <laughs> all right, so uh, I think that was it. Again, a great donation to my channel. I really appreciate it, Roy. And uh, actually me and Roy are gonna grab a couple of beers together and uh, check out this stuff later. <laughs> The last item of this video is this one, and uh, this is a big one. I need to use my floor again. <laughs> so uh, this is something I came across on uh, fin.no, a private seller, and uh, yeah, I, I really didn't think I would get it, but uh, it actually happened. And I'm really excited about this. This is actually a computer, and uh, here is the manuals. Apple 2E owner's manual. <laughs> and in the box, floppy disk drive number two. Floppy disk drive number one. <laughs> oh my God, this is uh, great. I'll take it out and uh, put it on uh, the bench. There it is, the Apple IIe, and uh, I have never seen one of these before. I really wanted to have one in my collection, and now I got it. <laughs> and I got this from a seller in uh, Molde, that's uh, farther south in Norway, and uh, actually he, uh, I didn't want to send it in the mail, so he packed it and delivered it on the cruise ship that goes along the Norwegian coast. It's called uh, Hurtigruten. And I know some uh, persons that work on Hurtigruten, so I uh, made a deal with uh, them and I got it sent uh, here for free and it took uh, yeah, <laughs> four days, but uh, that was worth the wait. There's one more box to this. And that's the screen, the monitor. Oh, it's heavy. Oh. <laughs> this is the monitor and uh, yeah, looking good. Keiga, is that uh, another branded uh, monitor or is this the original that came with the machine? I don't know, uh, have to check it out. So does it work? <laughs> well, let's see, I'm turning it on now and I have connected the, the monitor. All right, disk spins. Monitor comes up and it says Apple II. <laughs> so that's a monochrome green screen. <laughs> so it seems that it's trying to uh, load from the disk, but uh, it can't. So it's been standing like this for a couple of minutes now. So how much did I pay for this? Well, the seller was uh, really uh, not sure how much he should charge and uh, I wasn't really sure how much I should bid. So I threw in a couple of bids and uh, eventually I got it for uh, 2,500 nook, which is around uh, 250 euros. And 
Yeah, I don't uh, think that was a lot. I was actually expecting it for uh, going for much higher than that, but uh, there wasn't much interest in this machine actually, so I think I was lucky there. Anyway, that was it for uh, this video. I'm gonna check out this machine later in another video and uh, you will see it uh, <laughs> sometime later. I'm not really sure when, but um, for now this is it. Uh, yeah, great machine. It needs uh, some, uh, obviously some uh, restoration work and uh, check out uh, how it performs later. And uh, by that I say thanks for watching and thanks a lot to my uh, Patreons for the support on patreon.com and uh, please subscribe and like if you want to see more uh, videos from Arctic Retro.